This guide is going to take you step by step through equipment progression in Monster Hunter Rise. It will start at Village 1 Star and end after defeating the final encounter at Gathering Hub 7 Star as of the first title update. Here is some general information to keep in mind before you get started. You will want to constantly have 5 subquests active. Large Monster Hunt and Small Monster Hunt should always be active as they are constantly being completed. You should be using these two core subquests to gather a lot of armor spheres and Kimura points throughout the game. You should never have a shortage of armor spheres as long as you keep doing these two subquests. Every time you forge a new piece of gear, you should upgrade it with armor spheres. If you're ever low on Kimura points or armor spheres, just run a few easy quests focusing on completing the optional subquests and gathering account items. It is okay to avoid armor upgrades with armor spheres, especially in low rank, but if you ever feel like you're taking too much damage, go ahead and upgrade your armor. You have a new piece of equipment known as a Pedalace. This gets periodically updated for free as you progress through the main story. You'll also gain access to a few other Pedalaces at a certain point. Don't worry too much about your Pedalace and just pick one. They are not overly impactful to anything. I will have a Demon Pedalace equipped throughout the equipment updates well before you have access to one. Please just ignore it and choose your preferred Pedalace when you get access to it. After completing the first set of Rampage quests, you'll gain access to ramping up your weapons at the blacksmith. There are a few options for each weapon type. As a general rule, none of these really make or break the weapons. As long as you ramp up your weapon, you'll be fine. There's likely mathematically superior options, but realistically, just put any Rampage skill on your weapon and don't think too hard about it. Attack up, affinity up, and elemental attack up are all fine options. You should avoid anything odd like Elemental Blight Up or Elemental Exploit. Your armor in Monster Hunter provides you with defenses, but more importantly provides you with skills. These skills can do anything from increasing your damage to altering how your character behaves. The main skills you should be invested in can be broken down into five main categories. These are Offensive Skills, Sharpness Management Skills, Stamina Management Skills, Defensive Skills, and a few utility or miscellaneous skills. Offensive skills are just direct ways to increase your damage. It's primarily categorized by attack boost, critical eye, and weakness exploit. Critical eye is easily one of the best damage skills in the game as a critical hit gives you 125% of your normal damage output. A high critical hit rate is important when tied to skills like critical boost in late game builds. For defensive skills, you can look out for divine blessing which is a chance to reduce incoming damage. Defense boost can increase your natural defenses, and the various elemental resistance skills will increase your resistance to that specific element. Speed eating will allow you to consume mega potions at a much faster rate, decreasing your vulnerability time while healing. You can also incorporate skills like Evade Window and Evade Extender. Evade Window will give you significantly improved iframes when dodging through monster attacks. Evade Extender can greatly increase the distance you travel via dodging. Evade Extender is a skill that is wholly preference based, and you should figure out whether you enjoy running Evade Extender, and then you need to figure out at what level that you want to incorporate it. Some weapons will get a lot of benefit out of Evade Extender's increased movement, with some other weapons it may feel awkward with Evade Extender maxed out because you'll overshoot targets while using dodges to reposition. Experiment to see if you want to incorporate Evade Extender, and at what level you want to incorporate it at. Stamina management skills are not overly useful on Sword and Shield, so they're safe to avoid. Likewise, Guard is not actually overly useful. Your shield is small and not as useful for blocking as Lance, Gun Lance, or even Charger Blade. Your shield bash attacks can benefit from Slugger, and should also benefit from Stamina Thief. Both of these are not worth going out of your way for, but they are nice if you can pick them up with some other pieces of gear. You can throw in Stamina Thief if you have spare level 1 decoration slots at the end of the game in high rank, but level 1 sockets are kind of slim pickings. Sword and Shield can also use items while unsheathed. You can do a fun Helping Friends build where you incorporate wide range. This lets items you use heal other people around you. This is nice while playing online, especially with people who are, uh, let's call them overzealous. Otherwise, Sword and Shield has a little something for everyone and it can benefit from most of the skills in the game. We're going to mostly favor attack because the other gear is itemized pretty poorly. In the first set of village quests, you only need to complete two key quests. 
These serve as an introduction to the basic harvesting and combat mechanics before you start tackling larger monsters which will be the meat of the game. You will want to complete unpious peons and your choice of either roly-poly lanterns or fungal frustrations. The second key quest doesn't really matter. Use this time to acquaint yourself with the Shrine Ruins area and to start gathering materials. Make sure to carve the Bolfango, Izuchi, and Jagras you find in Unpious Peons. Monster Hunter is a pack rats game. You'll want to hoard every material that you come across. If you see a mining node, hit it. Bone pile, take everything. The last thing you want to do is have to randomly find some bones or minerals for an upgrade. Everything you gather will be useful, and you'll save time by gathering as much as you can along the way. Make sure to gather from bone piles and mining nodes specifically, as there are some upgrades that we want to get as soon as possible. Sword and Shield has a bit of a hard go of it in the early stages of Monster Hunter Rise. Your best bet is using the ore tree for a while. Forge the Hunter's Knife 1 using 2 iron ore. This is a significant upgrade over your starting Sword and Shield. You should forge the Hunter's Knife as soon as you have the materials. You can now forge the Chainmail Pants by using 2 Iron Ore. The Chainmail Pants provide you with Stamina Surge, which increases the rate at which you regenerate stamina. This is currently the most impactful upgrade available to you. Once you've finished your two key quests, you'll get an urgent request to hunt Great Azuchi. This is your first large monster and it will not be your last. Great Azuchi is largely meant to be a tutorial and should go down without much issue. You should learn about capturing monsters and breaking parts during this hunt. To capture a monster, you need to weaken it until your cat calls out that it's ready to be captured or you see a blue skull on the minimap. This blue skull is very difficult to see so pay attention. Now on to capturing itself. You have to lay down a shock or pitfall trap either under the monster or lure the monster onto it. Then once it's triggered the trap, throw two trank bombs on the ground near the monster and you'll capture it. Shock traps are crafted using thunderbugs and trap tools available from the merchant. Pitfall traps require nets which are crafted by using one spider web and one ivy. Then you can craft the net into a pitfall trap by combining it with trap tools. You can eventually use Buddy Bargaining to harvest large amounts of Thunderbugs and other materials automatically. Capturing monsters has a few benefits. Most notable is that it ends the fight instantly. Some monsters will be ready to capture but still have a lot of health remaining for a kill. Capturing is both faster and safer in this regard. This has happened to me and it's happened to a lot of other people. You go into a hunt, you've carded twice, and you forgot your traps. You attempt to kill the monster, and then you get comboed and you fail the quest. Avoid this situation by always making sure to bring traps and trank bombs with you on every hunt. You can set up an item loadout to ensure that you never forget your trap setup. You'll also want to focus on various parts on monsters to break them. This can occasionally grant you a combat advantage, but it will mostly provide you with additional rewards at the end of the quest. For Great Azuchi, you should focus on breaking its tail and face. For many other monsters, the tail, face, claws, and wings are usually breakable and worth focusing your efforts on. Once you beat Great Izuchi, you'll gain access to the Village 2 Star quests. Starting off in Village 2 Star, you should head out to the new locale, the Frost Islands, for new materials. Accept the key quest, A Frosty Paradise, to slay 10 Baggy in the Frost Islands. During this quest, you'll want to harvest from bone piles and mine ore. The new materials available in the Frost Islands are Iceum and Dragon Husk Shards. These are used for some early weapon upgrades. Once you've gathered a fair amount of materials, finish slaying the 10 Baggy and finish the quest. Now you can upgrade your Hunter's Knife 1 into a Hunter's Knife 2 using 2 Iceum and 3 Iron Ore. You should forge this upgrade as it will make the upcoming farming significantly faster. Now is a good opportunity to farm the majority of Great Azuchi's set for baseline armor. You'll want to farm Great Azuchi in the optional quest, Great Azuchi Great Pain to build the Azuchi Helm, the Azuchi Mail, the Azuchi Braces, and the Azuchi Coil. This may take several hunts to gather enough materials for the set. Now is also a good time to talk about Buddy Gear. Buddy gear is crafted using scraps obtained from when you craft other pieces of gear. You can also trade raw monster materials for scraps or obtain scraps from the Meow scenarios later on. 
After crafting the near full Izuchi set, you should have ample scraps to forge the full set of gear for both your Palico and Palamute. If you don't, turn in some excess Great Izuchi materials for scrap and then craft the full Izuchi set for your buddies. Next, you'll want to complete the key quest, Grizzly Glutton, to hunt an Arzuros. Arzuros has some decent alternatives to the Izuchi set. First up is the Arzuros Helm, which grants the Fortify skill. Fortify is a good skill if you find yourself getting KO'd back to camp a lot. If you find yourself doing just fine, then stick with the Izuchi Helm. Next is the Arzuros Mail, which grants Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike triggers when you're thrown from a large monster attack. This is a nice damage bonus if you utilize the Wirebug Recovery to get back to the fight immediately and may be preferable to the Izuchi Mail. That's your call. You will have a few options for your final quest of Village 2 Star. You can avoid any more large monsters and simply do Plump and Juicy. Lagombi doesn't really have much unique on offer, so you should probably skip Rabbit Rabbit. Your best course of action is to hunt Great Baggy in the key quest Out Cold. Great Baggy is an easy monster, just be cautious of its sleep attack. Otherwise, Great Baggy really just needs to get some mechanics, because all he can really do is summon adds and twirl in a circle. Great Baggy has a few decent armor alternatives. You can consider the Baggy Mail for attack boost on your chest armor. Then you can consider the Baggy Greaves for attack boost on your leg slot. Attack boost is generally more impactful and more importantly, consistent over Critical Eye from the Izuchi set and Counter Strike from the Arzuros armor. Even if you opt to avoid forging this armor, Great Baggy's materials will not go to waste as we might need some for future armor upgrades. After completing the majority of the key quests in Village 2 Star, you'll unlock the urgent quest Feathered Frenzy to hunt Aknasom in the Shrine Ruins. Aknasom should go down without much issue with your upgraded weapons and armor. Once hunted, you'll be pushed into Village 3 Star. You'll have one large monster veto for Village 3 Star. Tetranodon is a safe bet. There's simply no offerings in terms of weapons or armor, so it's safe to skip for most weapon types. Great Rogi is the easiest of the key quest monsters in Village 3 Star. It's a good starting point. Hunt Great Rogi in the key quest Obnoxious Lord, Noxious Monster. Great Rogi's set is a cool gunslinger style armor set. The Rogi Helm and Rogi Greaves offer Evade Extender. Evade Extender is a skill you really need to experiment with to see whether or not you like using it. Then you need to figure out if you like using Evade Extender at level 1, 2, or 3. Evade Extender is a skill that is entirely preference based. Personally, I avoid it on most weapon types, but it can be very strong for repositioning on slower weapons. There's no harm forging these pieces and giving it a try to see if you like it here. You should turn some of Great Rogi's materials into scraps to provide gear for your buddies. Prioritize building the weapon for your Palamute and Palico as they deal poison damage. Your buddies being able to poison a monster represents a significant damage increase. Forge the Feline Rogi Guitar for your Palico, and the Canine Rogi Spiker for a total of 4 Rogi Scrap. If you have any remaining pieces of Rogi materials, you can scrap them, and turn your Palico into a little Bandito, and your Palamute into a Trusty Steed using 4 additional Rogi Scrap. At this tier of Village Quest, there are two new locales, the Flooded Forest and the Sandy Plains. Let's take a look at the Sandy Plains first. There are a few new materials available now. First, there's Macolite Ore from Mining Nodes. This will unlock the Alloy Armor Set. The Alloy Vambraces and Alloy Coil are solid pickups for a critical eye. The Coil also has Water Attack, but you should simply consider it a bonus. As an alternative to the Alloy Vambraces, you can look at the Jaggy Gauntlets for Attack Boost. You can find Jaggy throughout the Sandy Plains on Hunts, but you can also do the optional quest, a Sandy Cabal, to slay 14 Jaggy or Jagia. With Macolite Ore available from the Sandy Plains and a Light Crystal from the Flooded Forest, you can upgrade your Hunter's Knife 2 into a Fighter Sword. This is a nice pickup moving forward. Back to main story progression, you should hunt Kulu Yaku in the key quest Walking on Eggshells. Kulu Yaku has some solid equipment offerings. The Kulu Yaku Greaves are a good pickup for some minor stun resistance and critical eye. These are a nice alternative to the Baggy Greaves and have additional defenses. It should be forgeable after one or two hunts, which is also a nice little bonus. Baroth has some strong equipment offerings. You should hunt Baroth in the key quest Fightin' Dirty. The Baroth Helm and Baroth Mail are both worth considering for attack boost. The Baroth Mail also offers defense boost as a nice little bonus. 
Both of these pieces of gear are worth farming and should be used. You'll need a bear off tail for the helm, so cut the tail if possible, and if not, try and get it via a capture reward. You can always try to slice it off with your kunai if you're really desperate. The Baroth male requires big fins. These are carved from Dalex in the Sandy Plains. You'll want to craft some sonic bombs using screamer sacks. Bring the maximum number of sonic bombs you can and add some additional screamer sacks to your inventory to craft more if you run out. You should have a good amount of screamer sacks banged from Great Azuchi hunts earlier. Now head to the Sandy Plains and then to the desert at the northernmost portion of the map to do some land fishing. Find the roaming herd of Dalex, throw a sonic bomb, and attack them before they recover and run away. Carve the Dalex and hopefully you'll get a big fin and not be left hanging with the monster guts. Baroth also offers your first real opportunities for guard. The Baroth Coil and Baroth Greaves both offer a stack of guard. You may wish to consider this, but guard doesn't seem overly impactful until you reach guard level 3 or higher. You can consider these pieces, but this should be considered skippable. Guard will be more readily available in high rank. Now, you can hunt Royal Ludroth in the key quest, Spongy Oasis. The Royal Ludroth armor set is primarily useful for stamina management skills. The Ludroth male has stamina surge, and the Ludroth braces have marathon runner. You can adjust for these if you wish, but generally, Baroth's male will be a better offering. With the key quests of Village 3 Star completed, you'll get notified of the Rampage coming close to the Shrine Ruins. Except the urgent Rampage quest, the Rampage approaches. This is largely a tutorial, so just follow the on-screen prompts. Now you can set up automated defenders with a few ballista for yourself. When the gong rings, get down there and clean some clocks and you should complete the quest without much issue. After the Rampage quest is complete, you'll immediately get offered the 3 Star urgent quest of Monkey wrench in your plans to hunt a Bishoten. Go ahead and steal Bishoten's fruits. I love it. And then move on to Village 4 Star. You have one veto for key quests at this tier. You should immediately veto off your rocker. Viserios is just a terrible monster. Its insanely tough hide will cause your weapons to bounce constantly. Bishoten finally has a new weapon that's worth forging. You can forge the Exercising Sword 1 in two ways. The likely easier way is to start at the Kimura Tree, and upgrade your starting Kimura Sword into the second, followed by the third level. You'll need Slag Toth materials from Slag Toth from the Flooded Forest, and Neopteron materials from monsters like Alteroth and Banabra. Then you can upgrade the Kimura Sword 3 into the Exercising Sword using a Bishoten Horn, three Bishoten Talons, and two Bishoten Fur. You can forge this outright using a Bishoten Horn, 2 Bisha Tail Case, 4 Bishoten Feathers, and 4 Dragonite Ore. Dragonite Ore will be available shortly once you mine in the new area, the Lava Caverns. You should start by hunting Volvedon in the key quest, A Song of Red and Fire. This quest takes place in a new locale, the Lava Caverns. In the Lava Caverns you can mine for new minerals, Firestone and Dragonite Ore. If you want a more casual excursion into the Lava Caverns, you can use the optional quests So Hot It Melts Iron or The Best Quest. With Dragonite Ore available, you can forge the Ingot Greaves with Dragonite Ore, Macolite Ore, Iron Ore, and one Light Crystal. The Ingot Greaves give Critical Eye 1 and Attack Boost 1, making them a very valuable pickup for all weapon types. Once you get Firestone, if you've been diligent about carving Bolfango you face throughout the game, you should gain access to the Bolfango Mask. This gives you a stack of Bludgeoner, which is useful for your low sharpness weapons during low rank. You should only consider this if you skipped the Baroth Helm. Now make sure to finish off Volvedon and complete the quest. You can safely convert your Volvedon materials to scrap for armor upgrades for your buddies. Forge the Feline Volvi Helm, Feline Volvi Mail, then forge the Canine Volvedon Helm and Canine Volvedon Mail using a total of four Volvedon scraps. Next, you'll want to hunt Berioth in the key quest, Raging Whiteout. Focus your efforts on breaking the Amber Fangs, and then you can move on to the other breakable parts like the wings and the tail. The Berioth Vambraces are a solid choice for Critical Eye Level 1. These do represent a significant armor upgrade over the Alloy Vambraces or Jaggy Gauntlets. 
You should also consider forging the Baryoth Coil for level 2 Critical Eye. This is one of the best waste armors for low rank. You'll need various Baryoth materials, some great baggy materials, and some good old meaty hides if you want to build these armor pieces. Meaty hides are from Zamites, which are the frog, shark looking monsters in the Frost Islands. Next up on the hit list is Toby Kadachi in the key quest, The Streaking Shadow. Toby Kadachi has some armor upgrades for your consideration. You can forge the Toby Kadachi mail for Critical Eye. The Toby Kadachi braces have constitution, which you may be interested in. Both of these should be considered more side grades than true upgrades. Finally, the Kadachi Greaves have both Constitution and Critical Eye. The Kadachi Greaves are a nice pickup, but not necessarily better than the Ingot Greaves. Now hunt new monster Somnicanth in the key quest Infernal Lacrimosa. Embrace your inner boomer and bring energy drinks to keep yourself awake. Finish the hunt and move on to the next monster. Finally, you should hunt Rathian in the key quest The Queen's Procession. Rathian's materials aren't overly useful, so it's safe to give your buddy some upgrades here. Convert some of the more common Rathian materials like scales to scrap and forge new weapons for your buddies. Forge the feline Rathian rapier for your palico, and then forge the canine Rathian axe for your palamute using a total of 4 Rathian scrap. With the majority of the key quests completed in Village 4 Star, you'll be given the Urgent to hunt Magna Mallow in the Urgent quest, Comeuppance. This is a fairly significant difficulty spike, so prepare by upgrading your armor with armor spheres as far as you can take it. Don't be skimpy with your item usage here, and you should be able to come out on top eventually. After beating Magna Mallow, you'll unceremoniously have the credits roll. Once you're back in Kimura Village, you'll get the hand-me-down longsword from Fugan the Elder and be qualified to take on 5-star quests. You are extremely close to high rank at this point in the game. The equipment offerings at this tier are strong, but they will be rendered obsolete once high rank equipment becomes available. My suggestion here is not to actively farm for upgrades and instead power through the remaining key quests to push yourself to high rank. If you want to take it slow, or find yourself with the materials after the required hunt, feel free to forge select pieces of armor. You will likely need to come back to several of these monsters for materials for certain weapon upgrades down the line, it's just a lot faster to do it with high rank gear. There are 5 key quests at Village 5 Star and you get 1 Veto. Mizutsune should be your pick here, as every other monster has reasonable equipment for your consideration. You can skip Waltzing by Moonlight. You will now have a repeatable quest to farm Magna Mallow in Comeuppance. As the flagship monster of Monster Hunter Rise, Magna Mallow's weapons are strong offerings. They have large amounts of green sharpness, strong raw damage, and blast status. They are extremely strong at this point in the game. Feel free to forge Magna Mallow's weapon if you enjoy the upgrade, or you enjoy the Magna Mallow hunt. Magna Mallow's armor isn't anything spectacular. If you opted to forge the weapon, the armor has an interesting set bonus of Hellfire Cloak. My personal take is this isn't worth the time or effort to forge, but it's something you may wish to play around with. The Sinister Helm is a nice piece of gear if you're feeling the urge to upgrade. Resentment increases your damage while you have a red portion in your health gauge, and it can have reasonably high uptime. This won't have 100% uptime like Attack Boost does, but you'll also gain Counter Strike as well. Consider this helmet an option. First up, hunt Nargakuga in the key quest, Wind Speed Wyvern. Nargakuga's gear is fine, but unremarkable at low rank. Most of the gear is itemized for Evade Window, Evade Extender, and Critical Eye. Most of it is outclassed by other armor sets at this tier. Feel free to skip this, as Nargakuga's materials will be useful later on. Right now, simply hunt Nargakuga and move on. You can pick up the Nargakuga Sword and Shield now. It's a strong option for an increased 30% affinity over the Exercising Sword. Just like with the Exercising Sword, start at the Kimura Tree. Head through the Kimura Tree to level 3, and then branch down to the Hidden Edge 1 using 3 Nargakuga Scales, 3 Narga Tail Spikes, 3 Nargakuga Black Fur, and 1 Monster Bone L. You can choose to use Magna Mallow's Sword and Shield, the Nargakuga Sword and Shield, or stick it out with Bishiton's Exercising Sword. If you want to get super technical, you can upgrade your Exercising Sword into Zenogre's Usurper's Firebolt after hunting Zenogre. 
This is a very minor upgrade that just adds thunder damage. You can upgrade it if you've decided to stick it out with the exercising sword and have the materials after your required hunt. Personally, I'd skip this and either farm Nargakuga or Magnum Allo. Now hunt Zenogre in the key quest, Electrifying Epiphany. Zenogre has some very appealing offerings. The Zenogre Helm gives latent power and critical eye. The Zenogre Male has the exact same skill set. Latent power is very strong, but does have limited uptime with its mysteriously worded, quote unquote, when certain conditions are met. Latent power triggers when you've been fighting a monster for a certain amount of time. Once triggered, the effect lasts for a few minutes and then it stops and the counter starts again. Latent power is a skill you shouldn't go out of your way for, but it is usually tied with other powerful skills and good pieces of gear. The Zenogre Braces and Zenogre Greaves offer Constitution, which can be a decent pickup depending on your weapon type and playstyle, but skipping them is no problem. Now you can hunt Anjanath in the key quest, Nocturnal Tracker. The big standout of Anjanath's gear is the Anjanath Coil offering Attack Boost Level 2. The Anjanath Van Braces also have Attack Boost 1 and Slugger Level 1. Slugger may or may not be useful to you, but you can consider these an upgrade regardless. Finally, Hunt our old nemesis Rathalos once again in the key quest, Rathalos Alert! Most of Rathalos' offerings aren't overly interesting. The braces and coil are directly outclassed by Anjanath's offerings, and the remaining pieces are mostly itemized for fire attack and part breaker, making them not overly worthwhile. Simply hunt Rathalos and move on with your life. After completing the majority of the key quests for Village 5 Star, you'll get an urgent request for Hermit of the Swamp to hunt an Almudrin. Almudrin is quite difficult. You will bounce off of its claws in the very likely scenario that you do not have blue sharpness. You realistically just need to get through this hunt by any means necessary. Feel free to throw Kunai from a safe distance if it really comes down to that. Once you've hunted Almudrin, you'll be eligible for 6 star quests. You'll be at the final tier of village quests now, and you'll notice that there are no key quests. Every quest here is optional, and really, that means there's no current incentive to do them. You will likely need to come back to this tier of quests and hunt some of these monsters for materials to progress through weapon trees. But right now, it's kind of safe to just move on to high rank. It's significantly easier and faster to farm these monsters in greatly superior high rank equipment. You can technically get an upgrade to Magnum Allo's weapon at this point. You will need a commendation, which is from quests such as a test of courage. You can do this now if you're using Magnum Allo's weapon and want an upgrade. Again, you're free to skip this and return to it later. Magnum Allo's weapons definitely take a backseat to other offerings at the start of high rank. Right now though, you should purchase a power charm and armor charm at the merchant. These provide a small but permanent attack and defense power increase as long as they are held in your inventory. You definitely want to buy these as soon as possible, but they are likely prohibitively expensive at this point. You can complete easy quests and sell the materials, or even sell off some of your older equipment and buddy gear to reach the 70,000 zenny you're going to need. Back to progression, you'll want to complete the special license tests. These tests essentially let you skip doing the low rank key quests at the gathering hub. This is one test per star level. You'll want to complete special license test 1 to hunt an Aknasom and a Rathian. Next, complete special license test 2 to hunt a Great Azuchi, followed by a Bishaten, and then Magnum Allo. Finally, complete special license test 3 to hunt Rathalos, Zenogre, and Almudrin. With those three special license tests completed, you'll have bypassed the need to do the low rank gathering hub quests. As such, high rank is now available to you. It's off to the gathering hub now to start high rank progression. Well, after completing the urgent rampage quest, the blue apex, to hunt an apex Arzuros. High rank equipment offers decoration slots which can be filled with decorations to add some customization to your equipment. Decorations require a lot of materials and jewels to craft. You should not be actively attempting to fill every decoration slot in your gear as soon as possible. 
You should aim for crafting decorations over time as you progress through the main story. Decorations will have a name followed by a number. This number dictates the tier of socket that the decoration can go in. You can put a smaller number decoration into a higher tier socket, but not the other way around. For instance, a Rodeo Jewel 2 cannot be put into a level 1 socket, but you can put that same Rodeo Jewel 2 into a level 3 or a level 2 socket. For early game, it's recommended to pick up a Fortitude Jewel 2 for Fortify to fill a level 2 socket you may have in your equipment. Fortify is especially useful at the start of high rank as the difficulty does spike immediately. You will also get a lot of value by incorporating 3 satiated jewel 1s into your build for level 3 free meal. Free meal at level 3 allows you to not consume an item 45% of the time. This gets you a lot of value if you incorporate it as soon as possible. As another note, Geology Jewel 1s are also surprisingly useful at the start of high rank to help you gather up bones and ores more quickly, something for your consideration. A lot of decorations are also useful in very specific circumstances such as Pep Jewel 1s for when you're fighting Great Baggy, Somnicanth, and Basarios to become immune to sleep. You can consider these decorations on a case by case basis. More decorations will become available as you progress the main story and you hunt stronger monsters. You'll also gain access to the Melding Pot from the Merchant in High Rank. At the Melding Pot, you can use monster materials to meld talismans. Talismans are a way to incorporate extra skills into your build, just like decorations. Unfortunately, these skills are all randomized at talisman creation with very little ways to influence the skills that you get. You should use some of your extra monster materials and Kimura points to craft a few talismans as soon as possible. Then you should pick and choose the talisman that either has the skills that you like or is most suitable to your chosen weapon type. For the purposes of this guide, I will not be using talismans in any of my recommended builds. The random nature of talismans means there's no way to guarantee a certain set of skills or sockets. As a general rule, you can incorporate the skills that benefit your weapon the best that are not incorporated via your base equipment. You can refer back to the core skills section of the video regarding weapon specific skills. Short answer, just equip whatever talisman you have that best fits into your build. It's recommended not to waste too many monster materials in melding talismans early game as you're better off building the equipment you want first, then using any leftovers for melding. Try your luck at the melder a few times and then come back to try periodically. Do not waste your time gambling for the perfect talisman at the start of high rank. There's plenty of time for that later. With the special license quest complete, you'll be fast-tracked to the Hub 4 Star, which are high rank quests. You'll be fighting the same early game monsters as before, so this shouldn't be too intimidating. You will want to upgrade your gear using these easy monsters though. Basically, we're pressing the reset button on our gear progression. You'll have 5 key quests for this tier of the hub, but you'll want to complete the majority of the quests here for equipment. Just like in low rank, Great Azuchi has some strong offerings for baseline armor. Hunt Great Azuchi in the key quest, the Swirling Gale. You will want to consider farming Great Azuchi until you can forge the Azuchi Helm S for Critical Eye and 2 level 1 sockets. The Azuchi Mail S for Critical Eye level 2 and Recovery Speed 1 with a level 1 socket. The Azuchi Coil S has Critical Eye Level 2 and 2 Level 1 Sockets. If you favor Constitution, you can consider the Azuchi Braces S for Level 2 Constitution and the Azuchi Greaves S for Level 1 Constitution and Level 1 Recovery Speed. At the start of high rank, you'll want to get a weapon upgrade for Blue Sharpness. You can quickly forge the Snapper Sickle using Great Azuchi Materials. Forge an Azuchi Sickle outright, and then upgrade it using low rank Great Azuchi Materials, and finally into the Snapper Sickle using high rank Great Azuchi materials. Next, you'll want to hunt two Great Baggy in the key quest, didn't get the memo. The primary offering from Great Baggy is the Baggy Coil S. This provides attack boost 2 and sleep resistance 1. You won't get much value out of sleep resistance until Basarios and Somnicanth, but the attack boost 2 is worth forging the coil for. Great Baggy materials are also useful for forging into Pep Jewel 1s for sleep resistance for when you hunt Great Baggy, Somnicanth, and Basarios. Sleep resistance at level 3 is definitely very nice to have against these three monsters. During quests in the Frost Islands, you should be looking out for Remobra. These are easy to spot as they usually come down to feast on whatever small monsters that you've slain. Remobra hide pluses are important as they can be used to craft the Hunter's Mail S. 
This provides attack boost and handicraft with a level 1 socket. Handicraft is pretty valuable early on as it helps to alleviate the lack of strong blue sharpness in early high rank weapons. You can also consider the Hunter's Greaves S. These provide stun resistance level 1 and attack boost level 2 with a level 2 socket. These require high quality pelts which are carved from Kelby in the Shrine Ruins. Kelbys have a low carve rate for these so prioritize carving Kelby every time you enter the Shrine Ruins. If you want, you can also upgrade your buddy's gear by hunting Great Roggy in the optional quest, Dawning Toxicity. You can convert the materials into scrap to build the entire suite of Roggy gear for your feline and canine companions. Forge the Feline Roggy Guitar S, the Feline Roggy Helm S, and the Feline Roggy Male S for your Palico. Then forge the Canine Roggy Spiker S, the C Roggy Cape S, and C Roggy Male S for your Palamute. It's back to the Wild West. Hunt Keizu in the key quest, Knight of the Keizu. Most of Keizu's gear is itemized pretty poorly so it's safe to skip. However, you will want to hunt Keizu for suspicious fang pluses which will be used in decorations shortly. Next up, you can hunt both an Arzuros and a Kuluyaku in the key quest, Divine Comedy. Arzuros has no enticing armor, favoring raw defense and counter strike. Kuluyaku has some significantly more interesting offerings. You can safely ignore the Kuluyaku Helm S and the Kuluyaku Coil S. The flat affinity from Azuchi's Critical Eye is more useful than the maximum might from the Kulu set. The Kuluyaku Greaves S are a nice pickup for Stun Resistance 1 and Critical Eye 2 with a level 1 socket. You should forge a Fortitude Jewel 2 with your Arzuros materials as Fortify is a strong offering because of the difficulty spike in high rank. You'll also want to forge 3 Satiated Jewel 1s. These require Suspicious Fang Plus from Keizu and Kuluyaku Beak Pluses from Kuluyaku. These jewels provide free meal which when maxed out gives you a 45% chance to not consume a food or drink item. This includes Mega Potions so these are some of the most impactful decorations you can get in the game. If you need more Kuluyaku materials you can do the optional quest Totally Not Cool Kulu to hunt two of them. This will also get you some new Dango as a bonus. You can now hunt Agnesom in the key quest, Dancing Apparition. Unfortunately, most of Agnesom's armor offerings are very lackluster, just like in low rank, and can be safely passed over for superior offerings. Simply hunt Agnesom and move on with your life. Agnesom does have the materials for a Rodeo Jewel 2. This is something you may want to put into a level 2 socket you may have open in your equipment. Next, you can hunt Lagombi in the key quest, Even Cute Things Have Fangs. Lagombi has a standout piece of gear with the Lagombi Vambraces S. These provide Critical Eye Level 2, Ice Attack Level 1, with a Level 1 and a Level 2 Socket. These do require a rare Beast Gem so it may take several hunts to acquire them. They are a solid piece of gear and one of the easiest ways to reach Critical Eye Level 7. Don't go out of your way to forge them now but eventually you will want to consider them. The Ice Attack is a nice bonus if you're using an Ice Weapon but these gloves are good regardless of the slightly wasted itemization if you're not. You should also go ahead and complete the optional quest, Study the Sword and Shield, right now. You'll have to make sure to bring traps and trank bombs because you'll have to capture an Aknasom during this quest. But, you'll get a new switch skill for your trouble. With the majority of the key quests completed, you'll get a new request for the next urgent quest. Except the Restless Swamp to hunt everybody's favorite returning monster, Jiratotis. Very cool they brought it back from Monster Hunter World. Once you're done wailing on this glorified punching bag of a monster, you'll graduate to the Hub 5 Star. You'll get a standard veto at this rank, and unsurprisingly, just like in low rank, it's Basarios. Skip the key quest, minor problem. You can always come back to Basarios later if you need materials for certain decorations or upgrades. You can hunt Bishoten in the key quest Rotten Fruit. This monkey's got a new trick up its sleeve with its paralysis fruit. I love it! Bishoten's materials generally aren't useful for anything at the moment, but you can hold on to them for future armor upgrades. Well, just kidding, they are actually immediately useful. You can upgrade your Exercising Sword 1 from low rank to the Exercising Sword 2 now. This is a quick and worthwhile upgrade that will be stronger than Great Azuchi's Snapper Sickle. If you need more Bishoten materials, consider doing the double Bishoten quest, Grasp the Greatsword. You'll snatch the Greatsword's switch skill if you ever plan on playing around with it as a bonus. 
Now that you're situated with high rank equipment, you may want to consider going back to the village 6 star to get materials to forge the Scalda Elektra S. If you're playing a female hunter, this will be called the Spio Elektra S. This does require farming Almudrin for an Almudrin plate, but it should be significantly less painful in high rank gear with a blue sharpness weapon. You'll also need to set up buddy bargaining to get a toxic Kumori, and farm some Altaroth materials. This is a very nice waste armor that offers weakness exploit too, but no sockets. Weakness exploit gives a very large affinity bonus, but it only applies when hitting weak points. You can consider it a strong option if you're confident in your ability to consistently hit weak points. If you're not, other options are likely better. You can start gathering hub 5 star with Royal Ludroth in the key quest, Foul Play in the Forest. This will be your first excursion into the flooded forest in high rank. You should mine for Fusium Ore here so you can unlock the Ingot Greaves. You'll need some monster keen bones as well, so once you obtain them for monsters at this tier, forge the Ingot Greaves. These are extremely strong and should be forged as soon as possible. Back to the key quests in Royal Ludroth, the offerings are mostly related to Stamina Surge. The Ludroth Male S has Stamina Surge level 2 and a level 2 socket. The Ludroth Coil S has Peak Performance level 2 and Marathon Runner level 1 with a level 1 socket. This coil is worth considering even if your weapon gets minimal value out of Marathon Runner. Baroth has strong offerings just like in low rank so it should be your next target. Hunt Baroth and the key quest Rise Above the Mud. This will also be your first excursion into the Sandy Plains in high rank and some new materials from its small monsters will be available. The most appealing pieces of gear are the Baroth Helm S for Attack Boost 1, Defense Boost 1, and Offensive Guard 1 with a level 2 and level 1 socket. Your weapon may not benefit from Offensive Guard, but the base skills and sockets make this an appealing pickup regardless. The Baroth Male S has Attack Boost 1 and Defense Boost 2 with a level 2 socket, again making it a strong contender and worth forging. You'll need Big Fins, which again are from Dalex and the Sandy Plains. Head out to go land fishing with your sonic bombs and take out any packs of Dalex that you see. The Baroth Vambraces S have attack boost 2 with affinity sliding and 2 level 1 sockets. You can consider the Baroth Coil S and Baroth Greaves S for weapons that can utilize guard. The Coil offers defense boost 1 and guard level 2 with a level 1 socket. The Greaves offer guard 1, defense boost 1 and offensive guard 1 with a level 2 and a level 1 socket. If you can use Guard, the whole Baroth set is a viable course of action. Since the Baroth armor is very appealing, you'll have acquired some scrap from forging it. You can go ahead and forge some new armor for your buddies. Forge the Feline Baroth Helm S and the Feline Baroth Male S for your Feline using two Baroth Scrap Plus. Then forge the Canine Baroth Helm S and the Canine Baroth Male S for your Palamute using two more Baroth Scrap. If you're low on scrap for whatever reason, just go ahead and convert some materials into scrap. Next up, you can go ahead and tackle Double Volvodon in the key quest, Bold Over. Pookie Pookie is on the key quest this time with Go Away Pookie. If you're playing as a Blade Master, you can skip all of Pookie Pookie's armor. It's itemized for gunners. You can convert some of the low value materials like scales into scrap fairly safely and craft some new weapons for your buddies. You can forge the Feline Pookie Bow S for your Palico, and then forge the Canine Pookie Arrow S for your Palamute for a total of 4 Pookie Scrap Plus. If you're desperate to hunt one more Rathian in your lifetime as a monster hunter, you can hunt Rathian in the key quest Charmed by a Queen. You can convert some of the low value materials like scales into scrap and craft some new weapons for your buddies. You can forge the Feline Queen Rapier for your Palico, and then forge the Canine Rathian Axe S for your Palamute for a total of 4 Rathian Scrap Plus. With all the key quests down, that means a new urgent quest. If you're following this guide, you vetoed Mizutsune in low rank. Now it's finally time to take it down in the urgent quest, a bewitching dance, to get access to the next tier of village quests. I fought so many Rathalos in my life that the sight of it just puts me to sleep. To death, bro. You can go ahead and veto Red Skies at Night for this tier. Rathalos' gear is completely mediocre this time around with some awkward itemization besides maybe his gauntlets, and that's a strong maybe. 
Baryoth is a solid choice to tackle for most weapon types. Hunt Baryoth in the key quest, Sharpening Amber Fangs. Armor-wise, the offerings are a bit situational. While not directly an upgrade, the Baryoth Vambraces S are worth considering. They offer Quick Sheath 1, Maximum Might 1, and Critical Eye 1 with a level 2 socket. The Baryoth Coil S is also a nice pickup for Critical Eye 2 and Critical Draw 1 with a level 1 socket. Your mileage with Critical Draw will vary, but it's worth looking into. You can go ahead and hunt Toby Kadachi in the key quest, Skies Are Grey. Toby Kadachi's armor offerings are pretty solid all around, but aren't the strongest offerings at this tier. The Kadachi Braces S offer Constitution 3 with a level 2 socket. The Kadachi Greaves S have Constitution 1, Critical Eye 2 with a level 2 and a level 1 socket. These are nice pieces to mix and match with if you want to incorporate Constitution into your build. Then the Toby Kadachi Coil S has Mind's Eye level 2 with two level 1 sockets. The Toby Kadachi Coil S is a nice way to incorporate Mind's Eye for certain monsters with a couple of bludgeoner based builds at endgame. You should definitely hunt Zenogre in the key quest, Skies Flash, Clouds Boom. Zenogre has easily some of the best gear available at this tier of hub quests. Just like in low rank, the Zenogre Helm S and Zenogre Male S are very strong pickups. They have the exact same itemization, Latent Power 1, Weakness Exploit 1, with a level 1 socket. These are solid pickups and will be some of the best pieces you can mix and match with at endgame depending on your talisman options. It's strongly recommended to forge these two pieces. You definitely want to hunt Nargakuga in the key quest, The Abyss Stares Back. The armor isn't great, but it is worth considering if you want to run a Vade window. The chest is a standout as a nice alternative to the Zenogre Male S. The Narga Male will give you a consistent affinity increase with Critical Eye 2 versus the weakness exploit from Zenogre Male. Narga's chest also has an extra socket. If you're someone who likes running a Vade Extender, you can consider the Nargakuga Braces S and the Nargakuga Coil S for more options. Nargakuga's weapons are your best bet for Sword and Shield at the moment. You should hunt Nargakuga and upgrade your low rank Hidden Edge 1 into a Hidden Edge 2 now. If you skip this during low rank, go ahead and forge through the path right now. The 30% affinity gain is worth the 10 raw damage loss from the Exercising Sword. It's true, I've done the math. Forge the Hidden Edge 2 now and bench your Exercising Sword. It served its purpose. Next up, you should hunt Anjanath in the key quest, closer than it appears. Anjanath has a very powerful waste armor with the Anjanath Coil S. It's itemized for attack boost too, but boasts a level 2 and 2 level 1 sockets making it an excellent pickup once you gain access to endgame decorations. This does require a very rare Anjanath gem however, and it is a piece of armor that you should work towards over time, rather than farming for it right now. The Anjanath Vambraces S are also a reasonable pickup if you're looking to upgrade from Baroth's Vambraces. You'll trade a level 1 socket and affinity sliding to gain level 2 slugger, which your mileage will vary with. You'll maintain attack boost too and gain some increased defenses in the deal. Now you can go ahead and hunt Somnicant in the key quest, a Somniferous Elegy. It is strongly recommended here to socket in 3 Pep Jewel 1s into your equipment. This will neuter Somnicant's sleep and make this fight a complete steamroll. It's really unfortunate that there's not really any real gear offerings for your trouble though. With all of that completed, it's time to take on Wind Serpent Ibushi, except the urgent Rampage quest, Serpent God of Wind. This is another Rampage quest, and it's mostly a free win. Set up your automated defenders and a few ballistas and cannons for yourself. You can set up defenses in the second area in the downtime between waves 1 and 2 if you need it. Now, after completing Serpent God of Wind, hopefully you carved or received as rewards two Ibushi Claw Plus. These are used to turn your Power Charm into a Power Talon, and your Armor Charm into an Armor Talon. Make these combines if you're able, and then purchase a new Power Charm and a new Armor Charm. Keep the Power Charm, Power Talon, Armor Charm, and Armor Talon in your inventory for the rest of the game for their stacking attack and defense bonuses. If you did not get 2 Ibushi Claw Plus, you should periodically check the Rampage quest list and do the Rampage whenever Wind Serpent Ibushi shows up. Regardless, after beating Wind Serpent Ibushi, you should immediately get the next urgent for unlocking the next tier of hub quests. This is Can't Kill It With Fire to hunt Rachna Kadaki. 
Once you've exterminated that spider, you can move on to the final tier of hub quests, 7 star. There is a lot of good equipment to be had at this final tier of gathering hub quests. However, you should power through as quickly as possible to finish the current end of the main story, which will raise your hunter rank cap. You'll need to do some serious hunter rank grinding after the final boss, and unlike previous Monster Hunters, Monster Hunter Rise won't retroactively boost your hunter rank for quests completed. Go ahead and complete the next series of key quests, and then the urgent. Your current armor is suitable for beating the game, and all that's left is likely some quick weapon upgrades. We'll come back to the armor available at this tier once we've cleared out Thunder Serpent Narwa. Just work your way down the list. With Rachna Kadaki materials available, you can upgrade your Hidden Edge 2 to the final tier. Go ahead and farm Narga Kuga and Rachna Kadaki in the optional quests. You'll need a Narga Medulla, which will take several hunts to get. Once you get the materials, upgrade your Hidden Edge 2 into Flash in the Night. This will take you all the way to the end of the game. Start with Goss Harag in the key quest. It's gonna get ya. Now if you spent the time to hunt Magnum Allo in low rank for his weapon, you can finally get the high rank version. You will need to complete some of the multi-monster hunts in Village 6 star for commendations to upgrade Magnum Allo's weapon to the second tier. You can now hunt Magnum Allo in the key quest, clad in Hellfire, to upgrade Magnum Allo's weapon to the final tier. This may take several hunts. Next up is Almudrin in the key quest, A Muddy Invitation. Diablos, like Rathalos, makes me the captain of the SS Snooze Cruiser. There's a lot of bigger fish to fry. You can safely veto Diablos here. Next, go ahead and hunt Tigrex in the key quest, A Resounding Roar. Finally, hunt Rajang in the key quest, Evil Afoot. If you're just a little baby, you can hunt Diablos in Subterranean Disturbances, but just know that I, Wesley Dale from Recommended Playing, will be personally judging you. Personally. Now with the majority of the key quests completed, you'll have to face off against Thunder Serpent Narwa in the final urgent quest, Serpent Goddess of Thunder. A special note here, but depending on your weapon type, you may wish to forge a different weapon. Forging a greatsword is useful as it has superior overhead reach and mobility compared to most Blademaster weapons. You can forge Goss Harag's Abominable Greatsword or Nargakuga's Dark of Night if you're really struggling with this hunt. It may help out. Likewise, a ranged weapon is also a strong option. You can forge a light bow gun for slow and steady damage. A bow is also a great alternative to most weapons. Just know that when you're using gunner weapons, you'll take increased damage. Otherwise, just use the ballista, cannons, and other hunting implements like the splitting wyvern shot and dragonator around the arena, and aim for her engorged thunder ball sack. Yeah. With Serpent Goddess of Thunder complete, you'll have completed the current main story of Monster Hunter Rise. There's no credit sequence this time, it's all cliffhanger. Once you've cleared Thunder Serpent Narwa, there will be a lot to unpack. Talk to everyone around town for new quests and sub-quests. You'll also gain access to the more powerful decorations at this point, such as Critical Eye and Attack Boost. Just a hot note, Wind Serpent Ibushi and Thunder Serpent Narwa's sets are absolutely terrible and should not be considered for really any weapon type. You can scrap a good amount of the Narwa materials to forge the Feline Narwa Lock and Feline Narwa Cloud for your Palico. Then forge the Canine Narwa Main and Canine Narwa Armor for your Palamute. These are realistically the last pieces of armor your buddies are going to need. You'll want to do a few quests right off the bat for several reasons. First, you need to complete quests to raise your hunter rank to 20 from 7 to unlock new urgent quests. Secondly, you can get some new petal aces by completing the two quests assigned by Fugin the Elder. You'll want to do the optional quest, may fire quell fury to capture a Rajang. Make absolutely sure that you bring pitfall traps, as Rajang will smash his way out of shock traps. Speaking of Rajang, he has some gear that's worth discussing now. You'll likely want to forge Rajang's Golden Hakama Pants. These offer Latent Power 1, Critical Boost 2, and have two Level 1 sockets. These are amazing footwear. They are especially powerful when you're running Critical I-7 with some other affinity boosting skills to get as close to 100% affinity as possible. These pants do require a rare beast gem, but they are well worth building. Next, you'll need to complete a Blaze Among Beasts to hunt a Rathian, Tigrex, and Rachna Kadaki. Completing both may fire quell fury and a blaze among beasts will unlock a new tier of petal ace. Generally, these petal aces are better than previous offerings, so make sure to complete the quests and then adjust your equipment loadouts with these new petal aces. 
You will also want to consider the Veterans Gala quest at the village. Despite being a village quest, this is quite clearly high rank. You'll need to hunt Rajang, followed by new to this game, Basil Juice, and then Magnum Allo. Completing this quest will unlock the Fire Seal eye patch. This eye patch is quite strong and gives Critical Eye level 4 on a single piece of headwear. This is potentially worthwhile, but it is outclassed by a helmet available at the very end of this title update. Make absolutely sure to capture Magnum Allo during this quest to finish Kagero the Merchant's request. This will be nice if you ever choose to play around with a sword and shield. With those three main quests complete, you'll be left to your own devices for a while. You'll have noticed that you've been getting outfit vouchers from this higher tier but still 7 star quest list. You can use these to forge Layered Armor. Layered Armor offers you no combat advantage and it is purely for the aesthetics. Go ahead and use these tickets and farm whatever sets you like the look of. My personal picks are Banabra, Rogi, and Somnicanth, and of course, the Fire Seal Eye Patch. You could maybe make Ibushi or Narwa sets if you thought they look cool, I guess. It's pretty much the only purpose for them at this point. Next, you'll need to farm to raise your hunter rank for the next urgent. You can realistically do whatever you want here. You should try and complete all the newly available quests to aim for 100% quest completion. Basil Juice and Apex Arzeros should be available now. You can opt to hunt them in the optional quests Return of the Basil Juice and the Avaricious Apex Arzeros. You go ahead and say that three times fast. Otherwise, go ahead and farm monsters for armor that looks appealing. They have weapon upgrades that you have yet to finish off, or their materials can be crafted into good decorations that you want. For this guide, we'll quick fire through some gear you may want to make while farming your hunter ranks. Rachna Kadaki's Rachna Arm Guards and Rachna Greaves have great constitution and stamina surge offerings. The remaining three pieces are decent spread gunner gear. The Almudran Helm S is nice for switch axes and charge blades with rapid morph level 2 and two very valuable level 2 sockets. The Almudran Male has level 2 razor sharp and level 1 power prolonger. Gossarag's set is pretty decent for critical and punishing draw maxed out with some agitator and resentment thrown in. Solid pickups if you're using a lot of draw attacks. Magnamello's Sinister set is okay if you want to try out Hellfire Cloak with its weapon, but the Sinister Gauntlets S are nice for Handicraft level 2 with a level 2 socket. The Alucanth set, or Ropesa set if you're a female hunter, was available after beating Rachna Kadaki. The Alucanth Vertex S and Alucanth Thorax S are nice pickups for incorporating critical element into your builds. Critical element is significantly weaker than in Monster Hunter World, but it's still worth considering on some weapon types. Tigrex is how you get high grade earplugs with the Tigrex Helm S, Tigrex Mail S, and Tigrex Coil S. Earplugs is severely overcosted, but hey, you may want to run it. Basil Juice's gear is also a nice pickup if you're looking at gun lancing or charge blading sometime in the future. Eventually, after many, many quests, you'll reach Hunter rank 20 and unlock the urgent quest for Camellios, Ancient Illusion. Camellios' gear is pretty lackluster, but it offers a set bonus that is tailored to fight the next Elder Dragon in the next urgent quest. Personally, I think you're better off avoiding farming this set. You can simply socket in decorations to reach Wind Resistance level 3. Camellios' gear just does not have enough skills or sockets to justify using it, even against its intended target. That being said, Camellios is a new monster and a relatively fun fight, so you're free to farm it if you choose. You can scrap a few common pieces of Camellios' gear to forge some new weapons for your buddies. You can forge the Feline Genie Breath for your Palico, and then forge the Canine Mizuo Wand for your Palamute. After hunting several Elder Dragons, Elder Dragon Blood should also be available, which means that the Damascus set is on the table. This is mostly an alternative earplugs and handicraft set. Your mileage will vary, you might be a little bit interested in some pieces. After beating Camellios, you'll need to farm another 10 Hunter Ranks to reach Hunter Rank 30. Do whatever you need to for equipment, decorations, or just whatever you like hunting until you reach the next Hunter Rank cap. It's strongly recommended to farm materials for Wind Resistance decorations during this point if you do not already have them. At Hunter Rank 30, you'll unlock the urgent quest to hunt Kushala Daura in The Steely Storm. Again. You'll want to adjust your build to accommodate Wind Resistance Level 3 to make this a more tolerable fight. Or you can wear the parts of Camellios' set that give Camellios' blessing. Much like Camellios, most of Kushala Daura's gear is not overly worthwhile. Several pieces of Kushala Daura's gear have handicraft and gunner options if that's something that you're interested in. 
The Kushala Glare specifically is a nice pickup for Handicraft 2 if you're a Blade Master, or Normal slash Rapid 2 if you're a Gunner. Unfortunately, it's in a very similar spot to Camellios. There's just not enough desirable skills or sockets to really justify its usage. The armor-specific skill is also meant for the next monster, but it's extremely lackluster and does not feel impactful enough to wear its set over your current offerings. Once again, you'll need to farm another 10 Hunter ranks to unlock the next Urgent. Farm whatever you see fit to gain these 10 levels. At Hunter rank 40, you'll face off against Teostra in the Urgent quest, the Emperor of Flame. Teostra finally has some decent offerings for us, and most notably is the Kaiser Crown. This offers Critical Eye level 3 and Critical Boost with a level 1 socket. This is an excellent piece of gear to pair with Rajang's Golden Hakama Pants for level 3 Critical Boost. The rest of Teostra's set is worth building. Teostra's Blessing at max level makes you immune to Venom, which neuters a lot of Camellios' damage. This is also a useful set against Apex Rathian. You can consider building the rest of Teostra's set at your leisure. The gloves are also a nice pickup because you can tie them with the Rajang pants again, and then replace your helmet with something else like the Flame Seal. You can forge a Tigrex sword now with Kushala Daura materials. You'll need to work through the Kimura tree, and then branch down to the Royal Claw. Then you can upgrade through the Tigrex tree to the final tier. This is a very strong option and comparable to the Flash in the Night from Nargakuga. You can opt to use the Tigrex Sword instead. If you want a maximum crit build, you can stay with the Flash in the Night. Just one final note. Once you've completed Kagero's request of capturing a Magnum Allo, and you've hunted all three Elder Dragons, you'll have access to the Ninja Sword path. The High Ninja Sword has good raw damage and a natural 100% affinity. This means that every attack will critically hit and you won't need to invest in skills like Critical Eye or Weakness Exploit. You can run this sword two ways. You can use Handicraft to push it to blue sharpness and then use Master's Touch to maintain that blue sharpness for longer. The second way is just to lean into the green sharpness and run it with Bludgeoner, potentially Mind's Eye, and buff your attack power as high as possible. You'll definitely want to run Critical Boost on both styles, as you'll get maximum value out of it. The High Ninja Sword is maybe not top tier, but it's definitely a fun weapon, and we need more of those in Monster Hunter. That's all there is for the title update. You can finish off the remaining sets you want to build, or try out some new weapon types. You'll also want to forge a full set of most of the decorations in the game, like Razor Sharp, Tenderizer, Critical Eye, Attack Boost, and various other utility skills that you like the look of, or are strong for your weapon type. You'll also likely spend most of your days throwing monster materials by the truckload into the Melder, just so you can get an Ice Attack 2, Fire Attack 2 Talisman. Kagero? You con man!